be a part of this big message. And the message we preach all week is Jesus, crucified on the cross, shed his blood for us, resurrected on the third day, so that we can share the good news with all these kids and people in our lives. Lord, we ask you, give Billy peace, give him the words, Holy Spirit, move the hearts of everybody here listening, that, Lord, they will really understand in a, in a spiritual way how critical it is to understand the most important decision of our lives. And it's Jesus, Jesus alone. Without him, we have nothing. Without him, we have nothing ever for eternity's sake. So thank you again, Lord, that we're a part of this big message. Bless my brother Billy here to give a good message tonight. And we know, Lord, that you're using him as a vessel. And we ask Jesus and God's people said, Amen. 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 <laughs> you got an amen in? Let's hear an amen. Let's hear an amen. Amen.
The thief does, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. Your enemy wants to destroy your life, both on this earth and eternal life. He wants to ruin your existence and make you more and more visible each day. The devil wants to lead you into a life of eternal misery in heaven. I want you to ask yourself, how is he going to accomplish this? What are the devil's short-term goals? Anybody got any ideas what the devil's short-term goals are with you?
Another temptation that the devil pulled off was everybody knows the story of Adam and Eve. You know, he, he asked them to eat from the forbidden tree. God gave them everything they needed and told them they would live forever as long as they didn't eat from that one tree. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord of God had made. He said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat off every tree of the garden? In other words, did God really have your best interest? Did he really mean what he said? Does he really care about you? Can you trust God? The devil's short-term short -term goal is to get you to sin. But his overall long-term goal is for you to second-guess God's law. And that was it for them. They did that. They ate from that tree. The devil won. Jesus, on the other hand, showed how this war is supposed to be fought. He responded to Satan's attempt by turning to God and saying, staying to the laws that God had put forth. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is how you will fight the evil of the devil and trust God's laws. The key to success in every area of your life, if you trust God, it will be good. You will, you're not promised a life of, of no trials. Everybody goes through trials. You're not promised a life of, of riches. But if you trust God, you'll have a good life. There was a shooting kind of set the standard for school shootings. It was in Columbine, Colorado. And, you know, after every shooting, you guys, I don't know if you pay attention to the news, but everybody gets all excited. And, and rightfully so. <coughs> Kids are every parent's most precious. Not profit, but, you know, there's nothing more precious to a parent than a kid. Any parents can tell it to I don't know what I would do if someone hurt one of my kids or my grandkids. I probably wouldn't be God. But, so they called the guy up to this congressional meeting. It was on May 27th, 1999. Daryl Scott was invited to speak at a House Judiciary Committee meeting. Daryl was the father of Rachel Scott. She was a victim of this shooting. On April 20, 1999, he spoke honestly to them and even wrote a poem. He read his poem to the politicians. It wasn't well received from the politicians, but he read it to you. And I'm going to read it to you. Your laws ignore our deepest needs. Your words are empty, empty air. You have stripped away our heritage. You've outlawed simple prayer. Now, gunshots fill our classroom and precious children die. You seek your answer everywhere and ask the question, why? You regulate destructive laws through legislative creed, and yet you fail to understand that God is what we need. That's not what they wanted to hear. But there's a lot of truth in it. After tragedies like these, people of, you know, they write notes and they, they talk to people. And a lot of times they say, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Well, if, if you read things now, you hear a lot of criticisms for that comment. People say, what do your prayers and thoughts do for these people? This is evil. This is devil at work. This is him. I want you to doubt God's word. So I've got an expert here tonight. He's going to tell you what thoughts and prayers mean. Ross, if you would. Thank you for There's a, the Bible can be kind of funny. There's a neat story in Acts chapter 12. Uh, maybe later tonight you can read that story. In Acts chapter 12, verse 15, depending on what translation you read, uh, the line goes, you're crazy or you're nuts. 
Well, what led up to that statement, Peter, who was one of the apostles, was in jail, okay? This is in Acts chapter 12. And he's sleeping, or he's there between two guards, and he's in chains. So you're getting this picture in your mind? He's in jail, he's between two guards, he's in chains. And there in Acts chapter 12, an angel appears to Peter and says, get up. Well, it's kind of like um, Billy in the morning. When it's time to get up, he's a little bit slow <laughs> getting up. Uh, uh, but the angel says, get up, Peter. Well, Peter finally kind of wakes up to his senses, and sure enough, he gets up, and the chains have fallen away. And the guards, either they're still asleep or something, and Peter walks out of jail. Well, again, he comes to his senses outside the jail, and he's kind of thinking, what do I do? So he goes to this house nearby where inside the house, are you staying with the kind of this picture in Acts 12? There's a bunch of people, I don't know if there's this many or what, but there's a bunch of people, and do you know what they're doing? They are in a prayer meeting for Peter's release from jail. Okay, in this house is a bunch of Christians <laughs> praying for Peter to somehow get out of jail. Well, they're in this prayer mid vigil, and Peter goes to the house, and he knocks, did I alarm somebody? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he knocks on the door, and finally a servant girl, it's a fun story in Acts chapter 12. This servant girl goes to the door, and either she opens this peephole or whatever, the Bible isn't clear, but you can kind of imagine, and she opens the door, or at least figures out, who are you? And he says, I'm Peter, I'm out of jail. Well, she is so excited, she doesn't open the door and let him in, but what she does is she runs into the prayer vigil group where they're in there praying, please Peter, please God, let Peter get out of jail. Please, oh God, let him get out of jail. Well, Rhoda goes in and she says, well, you won't believe this. And they say, what? Peter's at the door. And they say, sit down, Rhoda. I'm, I'm not making this up. It's in Acts chapter 12. Read it tonight. And they say, Rhoda, shut up. You're crazy. Verse 15, Acts chapter 12. You're crazy. You're nuts. Settle down. Sit down. We're having a prayer vigil for Peter to get out of jail. And you're talking about the power of prayer. Well, somehow their prayers work. Peter is released from jail, but they're kind of dull to their senses, and they're not willing to believe that Rhoda is saying, go check the door. Peter's there at the door. He's out of jail. Shut up, Rhoda. We're praying for his release. You get what's going on? It's a funny chapter in Acts chapter, uh, the New Testament, Acts chapter 12. It demonstrates the power of prayer. They were praying for Peter's release, and somehow they didn't believe in their own power of prayer when he was standing right out there at the door. God has a sense of humor. Prayer works. Prayer is powerful. And that's what that story, even with its humor, tells us in Acts chapter 12. Will that work? I told you. That's <laughs> So, I want you to, I'm going to leave you with two thoughts. The first thought is the devil's biggest trick to make people think that he does not exist. If people believe he doesn't exist, then he's at, he can roam around free again. You don't know he's there. The second thought is the devil, end goal, is for you not to trust God and lose faith. The war for your soul is everything. King David put it thoroughly this way in Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law. He meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river, rivers water that brings forth its fruit in its seasons, whose leaves all shall, also shall not wither, wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Think about when you sin and how you feel. The Lord is real. 